Michael Jordan scored 55 at Madison Square Garden. Kobe Bryant, he topped it. Hello to you. Lauren Shahadi here bringing you your daily sports update presented by Toyota. What a day for the Lakers yesterday. First, they find out that their center, Andrew Bynum, will miss 8 to 12 weeks after tearing the medial collateral ligament in his right knee. Then Kobe puts on a cape and plays Superman. No, that's Dwight Howard. But the way Kobe played last night, he looked like a superpower out there on the hard court. 61 points, pretty super, that's crazy good. Not 16, 61, that's the highest scoring game in the NBA this season. He passed Michael Jordan's opponent record of 55 points at MSG when he hit three free throws with 356 remaining. Then bettered Bernard King's mark of 60 set on Christmas Day 1984 with two more foul shots with 233 to play. His thoughts post game, it's a blessing to do what you love and to have moments like this. The Dallas Mavericks want more moments like this. Jameer Nelson would have taken away the moment where he left the game in the third quarter with a dislocated right shoulder if he could. And P.S. Howard was not in a Superman costume this game. Superman is now Kobe. Are you following? <laughs> not a fun night for the Hornets. Chris Paul goes down with a groin injury and from then on so did New Orleans. This one hurts. Paul leads the NBA in triple doubles with five now has 31 double doubles. Another week in college hoop, so naturally there is a new number one. That's how college basketball rolls these days. UConn, the latest squeeze. How long can they stick around? Well, if they play the way they did last night against number five Louisville, they may be around for a while. The Huskies certainly played with conviction. They wanted to make a statement, that statement being, we aren't going anywhere. And they aren't for now. Jeff Adrian scoring 18 points, grabbing seven boards, and the Huskies celebrated their return to the top of the polls. For the first time in three years with a 68-51 dismantling of number five Louisville. On a side note, what about Wisconsin Green Bay's victory over Butler? It was the third victory over a ranked team in school history. Will Bob Knight be part of Georgia's school history? He says he would consider returning to the sideline if the right coaching opportunity presented itself. It has to be a situation that I think is right for me and one that would be right for the university, he said. It has to be one from my standpoint where I think we would have the wherewithal to recruit and be able to compete with anyone. His name has been linked to the opening at Georgia, but Knight, who resigned as Texas Tech's coach almost one year ago, said he has had no contact with Georgia thus far. Pat Knight has had contact with his players on the court, and that is not okay. You can't run on the court, by the way. The Big 12 Conference publicly reprimanded the Texas Tech coach two days after he was ejected for twice running onto the court to argue a foul call. After two technical fouls and his ejection Saturday night, Knight left the floor only to return a few moments later to again yell at the officials in the second half of Texas Tech's loss to Nebraska. To the diamond we go. Is Manny worth 25 mil for one year? The Dodgers sure think so. While the team would not comment on any terms of any new proposal, several reports indicate that Los Angeles offered Ramirez a one-year $25 million deal. Oliver Perez and the New York Mets have reached a preliminary agreement on a three-year, $36 million contract, and tests have linked Roger Clemens' DNA to blood in the syringes that his former personal trainer says he used to inject the pitcher with performance-enhancing drugs. The test results could prove important to the investigation into whether Clemens lied under oath to Congress last year when he denied using steroids or HGH. You are officially free to go, but come back and see us tomorrow. I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll see you soon.